We have called together the Sunday Roundtable in our socially distanced fashion. So joining us this morning are Democratic political analyst Mary Ann Marsh and Republican political analyst Rod Ray. Hey guys, maybe one day we can sit around a table together rather than in these Brady Bunch boxes. But this we'll is, get this there. This is the pretty good part of the show. This is the pretty good sure. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could go outdoors. We could go outdoors. And there you go. There's some thinking. Yeah. There. So no round, but uh, square, uh, square, squares for now. Yeah. Um, so it finally happened, Maura Healy for governor. Is she the immediate front runner? And what's, give me one big plus and one big minus as she walks into the campaign. Let's start with you, Marianne. Well, Maura Healy is the front runner. She's the likely next governor of Massachusetts. She has every single advantage you would want to win a statewide race and especially for governor. Eye-popping fundraising. Not only, I mean, $207,000 in the first 24 hours alone. A statewide organization she's been putting together for the better part of a decade. And the instincts and the fearlessness you need to be successful. The only problem for her right now might be expectations, but all she has to do every day is execute. She really doesn't have that much competition. Rob, what do you think? Well, so I'll play the plus minus game. On the plus side, as Marion outlined, she's the leader, but that's on paper. And if we ran political campaigns on paper, uh, Martha Coakley would be a U.S. Senator right now. Scott Brown would be a state Senator and Elizabeth Warren would be a law professor. So, you know, we run campaigns because they matter and, they, and there's execution involved. How will she hold up on the campaign trail? We'll see. Um, on the minus side, uh, I, I think, what's the scrutiny that she gets? W the most important thing for a governor is where do you stand on spending, taxes, and the size of state government? We have no idea with Maura Healy. Uh, in a tough interview, that's going to come out. Voters don't like people who are high taxers. We'll see how that holds up over time. I'm, I'm curious, guys. You remember, remember for all the years the Red Sox had the curse of the Bambino. What about the attorney general curse? What makes her different from Martha Coakley and Tom Riley and Scott Harshbarg and Frank Bellotti, if she is different, Rob? Well, I think it's what Mary Ann said, the lack of competition. Now, that could change, but right now her opponents are, are not strong, Democrat or Republican. Uh, all of those other attorney generals had very strong opponents in those races, and, and they lost. I mean, there's... But there is that underlying reason that the last one to be successful was a Republican, Senator Ed Brooke, 56 years ago mm -hmm. getting elected mm -hmm. uh, to the U.S. Senate. So um, let's see if the lack of competition holds up or some of those candidates blossom. Is, is there a curse, Marianne, or, or what? Well, look, history is instructive. It's not necessarily predictive. The big difference here is, flatly, Moore Healy's a much better candidate than any of them ever were. She plays like a fearless point guard that she was. She plays offense. She has a sense of the big moments, like when she stood at the Women's March on Boston Common and said to Trump, I'll see you in court. But she also does the work that oftentimes doesn't get any attention and only matters to the person it helps. So she's got that combination, and she's great on the campaign trail. And I just want to rebut one thing Rob said. The fact is she's already eclipsed everything her opponents have done to date, and they've been in this race for a year. So she has to win this, but boy, she has been set up to do it. Great announcement, great message, a great rollout. She's, she's made, hit her mark on every single box you want to check. So 2022 is turning out to be a big political year. We now have a third open statewide race. Folks already gearing up for the attorney general seat, Marianne. Any immediate front runners, especially from the Democratic side? Too soon to tell. We have Quentin Palfrey and Shannon Liss, Liss Reardon in the race. They said they would get in if more Healy got in. They're in. The two new names that have come up, one, Mayor John uh, Mitchell in New Bedford, who's a very impressive guy. And he could be someone to really watch in this race if he does. The other one is Andrea Campbell, who we know most recently from the Boston mayoral race. She raised a ton of money. Frankly, she should have been in that final. She should have won that primary. I, she would not have beaten Michelle Wu. And the question is, what did she learn from that experience? So if it's a four-way race, I actually might watch the two people who, are, who might be getting in now, Mitchell and Andrea Campbell. So, Rob, can the Republicans find someone to run for this seat? Well, I think it's a great opportunity for Republicans, perhaps the best opportunity in a long time to win a statewide office with this being an open seat. People are concerned about crime. Crime is rising nationwide. Uh, people just saw downtown Boston businesses having to board up their windows and, and, and riots and sh people shooting up, mobs shooting up downtown Boston. So there's an opportunity for a Republican here, but you need money and organization. I'd love to see Andrew Lelling, the former U.S. attorney, run for this if he doesn't run for governor uh, in his own right. If Republicans could get a, 
a qualified candidate, and that's a big if well, Republicans they can win this race. Republicans only ever want to be governor and sometimes treasurer. They have no interest in being attorney general. And I just want to remind my friend Rob that Massachusetts and Boston in particular have an experience, the uptick and big swing in, in violent crime and murders and things like that. People are concerned about a lot of it is because it's just not being prosecuted and, and it's tamped down because of COVID. Next, next item is Dr. Rochelle Walensky. She left a safe job at Mass General to head the CDC right when COVID hit. She's been the target of critics. She had public disagreements with Dr. Anthony Fauci. So this week in an interview with The Globe, she defended her record. Rob, was she successful? I don't think she was successful because the main thing that came out of that interview is she blamed the naysayers and instead of taking responsibility for some missteps. Now, I do think she was absolutely right to reduce the quarantine period to, to five days and that that saved the economy uh, to, to a large extent over the past uh, month and in the coming months. Uh, but I, I think you have to admit responsibility for some of the missteps, the major one being they didn't stockpile tests even though they knew Omicron was coming. That's part of the reason we're in this situation. Uh, it's more the policy. Everybody seems to be focusing on messaging with her, but it's mm -hmm. the policy as much as anything else. What do you think, Maria? Uh, it's a failure to communicate, frankly, and it's plagued the Biden administration, and Rochelle Walensky is no exception, and that's unfortunate, especially in her position when people are looking to her for very specific, important information about a deadly pandemic. You need to be clear, concise, and, and make it simple for everybody. She has not done that, and people who've worked with her rave about her. Can't say enough good things about her, but the fact is she She's had a year to get this right and communicate effectively, and she needs to do it now. 